You're following up on Mike's uh, question, which I, I think there's a consensus now that AI and quantum computing are the new high grounds, or at least mm -hmm. will be the high grounds for the future. And, and, I, and I think there's still a consensus that we have an edge uh, in both those areas, yes. although, again, it's, uh, it's a diminished edge over where it was uh, a few years back. Uh, what's your advice to the Biden administration? How do we stay ahead on quantum and AI? Uh, you know, keeping in mind that we're an open society and we've got all these graduate students here and that sort of thing. Uh, what, what do we need to do to, uh, to stay in the forefront? Because my, my concern is if we fall behind, we lose the high ground, uh, we're going to be in for a rough spell. Yeah, the thing that I would say is tricky about AI is that there are, you know, a lot of aspects of the technology that I think we don't actually want to be pursuing too much because um, it's, it's AI is what you need for a surveillance society. You know, I've, I've, I've had this riff where, you know, people often say crypto or Bitcoin is a vaguely libertarian technology. I mean, technology is politically neutral, but it can still be. <laughs> crypto is sort of, right. if crypto is kind of libertarian, then AI is kind of communist. And, uh, and so even though we're ahead from the, you know, basic science of AI, China is willing to apply it. It's willing to turn the entire society into, you know, a face recognition surveillance state that's, uh, you know, far more intrusive far more totalitarian than even, you know, Stalinist Russia was. Well, there you have it <laughs> from the man himself. Uh, if you guys caught my video on Saturday, uh, you'll know uh, that I, I was bringing this up and that, you know, st strong AI, or eventually strong AI, but, but general AI, general intelligence AI, you know, it is, it, it is, and even like the precursor that we have now is being used to power the surveillance state and uh, it's a big deal in the community. We're all talking about it. Um, I think that if you're an investor in Palantir, you should hold your head up high and realize that these guys are way, way ahead on the discussion and the debate. And this is going to be a big deal. Um, you know, today was a serious shot across the bow. I really am just, you know, I've been critical of CARP in the past, but, you know, hearing from Teal and this, this uh, video, I'll have a link to it in the description was, was a fairly recent recording. And uh, hearing Teal back up what Carp is saying um, really just leads me to believe that that we're all kind of heading towards the same general direction and going to confront this this new evil in in the misuse of AI against human beings. It's a big deal, um, and be you know as, as a Palantir investor, you're investing in this future, um, and I really see Palantir being the leader here in this space because no one else is having these conversations. Uh, and I think that it's so important and we as a society are going to have to wake up to this fact uh, pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, this is some, in some great stuff. Like I said, get the popcorn ready. The fireworks are inbound. The tech industry is going to be like going through a mini revolution here. I, I can't wait to be part of it. I'm excited. Um, I'm loving the conversations. As a, as a technologist and an engineer, one of the funnest things to do, I don't want to say fun, but one of the most important things you can do is kind of debate um, the ethics and sort of how the tools we're using or the, what we're producing are being used. And it really challenges engineers to think as individuals, not follow the leader. And I love the effect it's having on people in, in, in Silicon Valley and my teams. It's just uh, pretty cool to see. So yeah, check out the video, uh, that full video from Teal. I'll have a link in the description. But yeah, like <laughs> great minds think alike, I guess. I don't know. Well, anyway. All right, guys. Talk to you.